Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat 156, featuring a retrospective of one of my favorite adventure games, Jim Walls' Police Quest. Now this is one of the games that was nominated by you guys, and the winner this time was Jack of Blades 111. So congratulations, Jack, and I'm very happy that you won because I like Police Quest too. It's a great game and there's lots to cover, so without further ado, here is Police Quest. And here we go with Police Quest, designed by uh, and written by Jim Walls. Now, what's interesting about Jim Walls is he's a real-life retired police officer. That's right, so a lot of his real-life uh, police work experience went into this game, which, in my opinion, makes it very authentic. A lot more authentic than certain other games about police officers. <laughs> <laughs> L.A. Noir. <coughs> uh, the other people that worked on the game, you probably recognize them if you are a Sierra fan. We've got uh, Al Lowe, who I interviewed earlier, a Laser Suit Larry guy. We've got Scott Murphy from Space Quest. Uh, Ken Williams, of course, the founder of Sierra. Uh, this is, uh, you'll recognize the screen if you've ever played any of the old uh, Sierra games like King's Quest. You've got the parser at the bottom and the graphics at the top. You move the guy with the arrow keys. Got a few function keys, a few special things just for uh, this this uh, series. See, I've got a uh, control D to radio dispatch. I guess you could play this with a joystick. I don't know why the hell you'd want to. <laughs> That's apparently an option. Uh, carrying nothing. Um, so what do we got here? This is a, a game about a cop. There's a lot of uh, manuals and new, a newspaper and all kinds of stuff that comes with the game uh, to give you some idea of what you're supposed to be doing. But like uh, any adventure game, I think a lot of the fun is, you know, don't worry so much about, uh, you know, the quickest way to beat the game, how to, the quickest way to get from point A to point Z, especially in a, a game like this where there's, there's a lot of humor and there's a lot of fun ways to die and lose. A lot of times the people don't realize that, but it's, <laughs> it's a, more fun to lose and do stupid things in these games and see the funny uh, reactions. Uh, it's a lot more fun just to, to, you know, to have fun with it like that. Uh, then just to focus on winning. Uh, so that's something you need to uh, to understand. See, I'm looking around here, seeing what's on uh, the table here, trying to figure out this <laughs> the language. Randolph Brown Nose Whipple Stick. Brown Nose Whipple Stick. Old BN rapidly manipulated his way to the top. See, that kind of gives you the impression that this really was written by a real-life cop, right? <laughs> you know, I... I, I played this game the first time. I must have been something like 11 or 12. And immediately after playing this, I decided I wanted to become a police officer. And I still, every now and then, I kind of, kind of entertain that uh, that fantasy, wonder what, what it would have been like. So here we are in the old briefing room. Let's see, 1,300 hours. Uh, oh, no, here you are for the 1,300 briefing, and it's 1,315. Oh, whoops! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, and I've already died. Oh, already died, folks. <laughs> I got to start over. <laughs> oh man, yeah, they, you know these old Sierra games—they they don't play around. Uh, there are <laughs> 99 ways to die before <laughs> even on the first screen. All right, let's just go straight on in this time and and see if we can get to this briefing. So here we are. This is probably not the most audacious beginning of a adventure game ever. I've got to do such fascinating things as figuring out which of these pigeonholes is mine. Uh, look around. Okay, we got a podium, writing tables, eight pigeonholes, and a blackboard and what looks like a newspaper. So here we go. First, you have to remember how to spell pigeon. Apparently, that's not right. Uh, let's try that. Oh, you look in Steve's pigeon pigeonhole. Okay, here we go. Let's look over here in this one. Ah, uh, quit snooping around. Oh, but which one's mine? Which one's mine? <laughs> I'm already having fun with this. Jack's pigeonhole. I shot the last sucker that looked in my pigeonhole. Oh my God! <laughs> Get game over again. Hurry. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
Uh, Sunny, 11.98 at Carol's Caffeine Castle later in the shift. Steve, I'm uh, going to get to have some coffee. I'm going to hold out hope that that coffee will also include a donut. Oh, I love donuts. I mean, it's not that about playing this game. It just gives me this crazy craving for donuts. I just, you know, God. All right, look at the newspaper here. And, you know, by the way, the game included a newspaper. It's actually quite important. A lot of hints and clues in there that you'll need. Oh, dope in the city. Who would have thought we've got a <laughs> crime rate? Uh, President Hickel was in Smugsville yesterday observing the annual migration of the red-bellied swamp coddlers. <laughs> like a golden crown scum sucker. I, I think somebody's not keen on politicians. Uh, more dope over there. The homicide rate and prostitution rates. Uh, uh, what else we have there? Escaped. Uh, female prison inmate escaped from uh, jail last night. Uh, it's got possibilities. Oh, there's uh, there we there we are. Bonds and Walters. Now look at there in the lower left corner is a little Easter egg for you. Kingdom of Daventry is now under siege by a renegade three-headed dragon. I hope you'll... Know what that's referring to? If you do not, please exit this video and <laughs> never return. Okay, here comes the men in blue. The what do they call these guys in the manual? The blue knights. Oh, let's look at the table. That's quite a bit of detail there for just a table. Now here's the next challenge in the game. Where is my assigned seating? I've got to find out where Sunny stands. <laughs> for these meetings <laughs> does not tell me you know back in the day by the time you adjust for inflation this game would have cost you a hundred and forty dollars so you can imagine that and how you must have been feeling about this moment when you realize that it's uh the third great challenge here is trying to figure out where the guy's supposed to stand at meetings <laughs> you know oh where's that death angel oh sunny find your desk holy sh Oh, boy, i got to find this desk in a hurry. Where, where does he stand? Maybe over here. Oh, let's try up here. Ah, there we go. The latest hot sheet of stolen rides. There's all kinds of stuff we're going to get up to here in a minute, but uh, uh, it all starts off with a nice, boring meeting. Oh, looking for a black 1983 Cadillac license number LOP1238 VIN CO34... Blah, 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 blah. Hope you're writing all this down. By the way, the manual does strongly encourage you to have a notepad handy at all times, taking very careful notes throughout. Everything that this guy says will be on the final. Look at that. Three possessions of drunk driving, cocaine, marijuana. I wonder how many people uh, played this game while they were high and... Uh, it's got to be a special place in hell where it's just you, Jim Walls, a PR-24 nightstick, and a question about why the hell you thought that was a good idea. You know, I love the little details here where you can bump into your fellow officers and chit-chat a little bit. You feel all chummy, warm and fuzzy. This is, this is good stuff. And, it, you know, if you think about the graphics and really how little difference the graphics make... And I got to tell you, folks, people that obsess about graphics, there's a word for them. It's called graphic whores. And whores suck, literally and figuratively. So you don't want to be that. Uh, you'll notice, though, that people that love gameplay, they don't call them gameplay whores. There's a word for them, too. It's called gamers. You'll ponder that. Oh, uh, by the way, you'll be wanting to save the game every 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you want to save a whole bunch of different save games because it's very easy to screw up and have to redo a big chunk of the game. And, you know, it's fun to follow those trails and see where they go, but it's kind of nice, too, if you don't have to repeat a bunch of stuff. So you definitely want to be saving out the wazoo. There's a lot to see and do here in the old police station, police headquarters. And you'll definitely want to come here and chat with the janitor a bit and try to find... Your locker is <laughs> that old familiar challenge once again. You know, have you ever had a day like this or you can't remember your which locker is yours or what your combination is? Uh, this is probably how I would feel if I woke up one morning and I was a police officer. <laughs> Sonny Bonds. 
Okay, let's see if I can find that damn locker. Come on. Of course it's going to be the last one. It's got to be the last one that you try, right? Okay, locker's too far away. It's got to be this. Got to be, got to be, got to be. Open, open. See, I'm so excited I can't type. Oh, there we go. Look at all that cool gear. Oh, look at this. Got a, got a gun and a gun belt. Speed loader. Got a briefcase. And the keys to my Corvette. And the towel. You know, it's very, very important that you always know where your towel is. Okay, let's get all this stuff and just type get all. That's really cool. Always nice when you can do that. I'm kind of kind of uh, weirded out by the fact that I've got a 357. Come on, uh, I guess uh, Jim has never seen Dirty Harry, or he would know that the 44 Magnum is what you want. Okay, let's take a look at what I got. Looks like I'm good to go here. However, there's a few uh, other things I need to do before I can leave the bathroom. Such as hear this guy say the same thing for the 300th time. And let's go over here and see if we can mess with this guy <laughs> sitting on the toilet over here. Let's see if we can get all chatty. Chatty with him. Look in there. Let's see. Okay, it's occupied. I kind of surmise that. Hey, Sonny! Someone filled a pair of pantyhose full of cotton balls. Wait, am I talking? Who am I talking to? <laughs> I guess we don't know. Let's get the help. Maybe we should try to take a dump before we go. Uh, no, doesn't seem to want to... No, I don't want to take a dump in my locker. Here's bathroom. What would you do with it? Okay. Well, let's get, <laughs> let's get out of here. Uh, this guy has to pee a little bit later. Hey, I tried. I, tr I tried, guys. Uh, okay, I'm out of here. Let's go back and see what other trouble we can get into. Now let's see, what's in this room over there? See, the one nice thing is you can type as he's walking, so you have it queued up and ready to go. When you get there, you just hit enter, and it performs the action. Let's go see if our lovely police chief has anything for us. A oh, nice office. Officer Bonds, your public awaits you. I think that's a suggestion. And that is probably what you thought computers, computer games sounded like if you were stuck with a DOS machine instead of an Amiga or Atari ST. Okay, what do we have over here? We've got a computer, an outdated terminal, just packed with valuable information. Let's see what we can do with this thing. Online database, and that is what the internet looked like back in 1987. Okay, let's type in that little piece of the uh, license, Malcolm Washington, Cadillac DeVille, Black, 1983. That eh, could be useful, I suppose. Maybe we should be keeping an eye out for that. Well, that eerie silence. I almost feel like I should pipe in the chips theme or something. Ah, there's a babe. Narcotics detective Laura Watts. Killing time in here. Well, let's see if we can uh, work our mojo. Come on, women love a man in uniform. Undercover cops, two desks. Come on. Veteran narcotics cop in all business. Talk to her. Oh, come on, lady. Let's try flirt. How can you do that? <laughs> can we dance? <laughs> I can't do anything. Come on. Entertaining idea. Well, you bet it was an entertaining idea. Oh, I guess this is hopeless. Damn detectives. Let's go see if we can find a prostitute. Let's see what we got over here. A photo. I guess we better call it a picture. Superior Court Justices. Now that's exciting stuff. A pad of blank memos. <laughs> Probably about this time you're like, oh my god, this game better get better very soon. Can you imagine if L.A. Noir had taken this long before he got to shoot somebody? <laughs> it's almost hilarious to think about. Oh, is there anybody in here? I know I should be thorough, but I am really raring to go. Okay, it's empty. Lieutenant Morgan's office. Oh! <laughs> oh, man. That's, oh, I guess he didn't care that I was snooping around his office. Let's get the hell out of here. 
All right. Now, well, that's what I'm talking about right there. Time to find our car. And you're not going to get to ride in that Corvette right away. That's a little teaser, a little tease. We'll get to do that for quite a while. Now, something that you would know if you had a legitimate copy and had read the manual is that you can't just jump in this car and go driving off. You've got to do some kind of inspection of it, which means you got to go to all four sides of this car and look at the wheels, tires, uh, make a four, I think they call it a four point inspection. Basically, it amounts to you got to walk all the way around it. You know, this, this smacks to me of Jim. Uh, this smacks of you, Jim. I know this is something a, a cop would have wanted, insisted that the game include this idea that you've got to go all <laughs> around the car. <laughs> okay, now I'm inside. Wear belt. Uh, buckle up, maybe. Uh, come on. <laughs> okay, wear seat belt. Uh, start the engine. Oh, there we go. The famous Police Quest driving screen. Now, this thing is hard as hell. If you bump up, bump the wrong key at the wrong moment, you have wrecked your police car and it is game over. <laughs> so, very difficult. Uh, you've got to be just uh, really precise uh, with the controls here. And you, by the, you have to obey all the traffic lights. That's a, a red light there. Now, it specifies in the manual that a red light is a circular red signal. That doesn't look circular to me, but believe me, it will be game over if I run it. You could uh, turn on your sirens and your lights, and then you could just go blazing through it. But the only problem with that is the car moves so quickly uh, that it's you know, ten times more likely that you're going to crash. So it's kind of a trade-off. I know what you're thinking. Well, if this were a Rockstar game, it'd be a radio playing like four different stations and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of licensed music. Let me tell you, folks, uh, back in 1987, we were smart enough to know that if you wanted to hear a radio, you turned on a f***ing radio. You know, something that's been lost between generations. It's very sad. Oh, we've got a dispatch. Uh, where am I supposed to go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's not telling me what street I'm on anymore. I'll tell you what, through the magic of editing, we'll arrive right on the scene. Now, one of the big themes of this game is following correct procedure. You know, there's a pretty obvious anti-government, anti-bureaucracy theme here as well. And they're real sticklers about doing things by the book. You know, maybe that's why this game works as an adventure because of that, uh, the existence of that very spe uh, specific and detailed code of conduct you know, adapts quite well to a game. Uh, you know, I, I could actually imagine this being used or as a training tool uh, for police. Okay, we've got a male slump motionless with a gaping hole <laughs> in his jaw. <laughs> okay. Uh, there might be something suspicious about that bullet hole in the window over there. Not your normal everyday draft, uh, traffic accident. In your opinion, this man was murdered. I think that's a you know reasonable uh, assumption. Well, let's see. We're not going to get to leave here, though, until we've done everything <laughs> that we're supposed to. I'm trying to investigate. It says I need to investigate this car. Uh, apparently, the coroner has a job here as well, so I can't search him. License plate is conveniently missing. Oh, God, what am I supposed to do? Oh, well, let's go talk to these rubberneckers over here. Talk to people. Oh, excited young man in bright yellow pants. I think I'd be running the other way. Uh, look down the street. Here comes this car, a light blue late model Cadillac racing down the street. When they got closer, I heard a bang. I thought, what, I'm at a blowout. The light blue caddy just kept on jamming. Just kept on jamming, man. I don't know. What kind of accent does a litanies in yellow pants for excited young man have? I, I don't know. Apparently they say jamming a lot. Okay, 10-4, 32 uh, copy 187, PC homicide. Now, by the way, all this stuff is in the book, in the manuals. You can look up what these numbers mean. 10-4 uh, means okay. 83-32 means... Look it up in the manual yourself. I'm too flippin' lazy to do that. 
Okay, uh, we've got a partial license plate, L964. Put that down in my trusty memo pad. I already got a two, three pages worth of notes here. Okay, I'm supposed to do something else. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Let's try talking to everybody. Keep radioing back and forth. Uh, you know, I hope that guy's pants were yellow to begin with and not after he came upon this accident. He did mention he was a little excited. Okay, report that in. Got a license plate, L964. Okay, there we go. That's what we needed. Let's see. Apparently there's something else we have to do here, though. Can't seem to leave the scene. And once again, through the magic of editing, we'll advance the plot. Yeah, so here comes the backup. We got Sergeant Dooley, Detective Oscar Hamilton here to take over. Uh, naturally, it's going to go to the detective to handle this. I'm just a measly cop. Can't uh, handle anything like this hard detective work. Got to work your way up to that job. You know, can you kind of reminds you of, a, of, of, a, of another game. I uh, can't... Uh, not coming to me. Okay, let's get the hell out of here. That's right. It is time for my date at the Caffeine Castle. All I got to do is park this thing without having a fatal accident. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. <laughs> you know, this is about as hard as parking in real life. Parallel parking. I, I, I suck at that, you know. Oh, Carol's Caffeine Castle. I'm really ready for some coffee and donuts. There had better be some donuts somewhere in this game. Huh. I see something in that display case back there. Let's see coffee, a menu, uh, coffee. Okay, what am I supposed to do? There's my fellow officer. Let's sit down. Hello. Boy, you earned your coffee after that mess. I think you should probably have a southern accent, don't you? You always got to have a, a southern accent on the cops. That seems to be the uh, the norm. No matter what city you're in, the cops always have a, a southern accent. Don't run off, sonny. You just got here. I'm not trying to run off. I <laughs> just want to advance the plot, and I need some coffee, Steve. How can you do that? Uh, boy, I earned your coffee. Okay, okay, about time to call that Sierra helpline, because I don't know what the hell. Oh, it's, oh, here comes Carol. Oh, Carol, Carol saving the day, big boy. One caffeine IV. Drink IV, what's a V? Drink, shut up, Steve! Okay, there we go, Jamaican Java. Eyeballs roll back in your head. Jamaican. Oh, excuse me, phone. Wait, is that is that me or the game? Oh, <laughs> I bet you reached through your phone too. Admit it, Officer Bonds. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go up and talk on this old timey phone over here. It almost looks like one of those wind-up phones from back in the day. Ah, oh, look at that exposition. Identify the 187 victim as Lonnie West, a local small-time drug dealer. I wanted you to know about it. Don't spend the whole day drinking coffee. Well, I'll tell you what. I want to spend the whole day drinking coffee. That, that's what I'm going to do. By God, this is my choice, my story, and my story is Sunny drinks coffee all day. Uh, well, apparently I can't do that. Guess it's time to get back to the business of crime fighting. <laughs> there's, there's, a lot, there's something missing here, uh, Steve. There's a little round thing with a hole in the middle that I'm not eating right now. Okay. Yep, I'm back on the streets. Whoa, 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 whoa. That red sports car just ran that red light. All right, it is time to activate the siren. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, intimidated, aren't you? Oh, yeah, she pulled right over. That's what I thought. 
get out of the car, too, or I'll play that tune again. Oh my, MG. I almost thought that said, oh my, oh my god, like o OMG for a second. Let's just let that play a little bit more, just to let her know we really mean business. Okay, let's get over there and check this out. You guys that have played this before, <laughs> you know what's coming. Come on, you know you tried <laughs> and tried. <laughs> oh, that little rich girl, little red sports car. You know, babe, uh, the arm is not the only long part of the law. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Flashing eyes, gorgeous hair, unbuttoned blouse, uh, irradiated skin, but... Uh, <laughs> cleavage! The cleavage! Oh, how rude. Well, if that's what it takes, I suppose it's all right with me. You quickly trade your integrity for a shot at cheap thrills and torrid sex! <laughs> yeah! 555-4369. Five, 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 Give me a call sometime. Holy, you better believe it, sister. All right, let's go straight through a phone. <laughs> oh, my MG. Helen Hotz. Man, what part of this lady doesn't scream horrid thrills? Or was it cheap sex? I don't know. I'm kind of confused. Just, just get me to a phone. <laughs> just get me to a phone. Well, at least I remember to put my seatbelt on. Uh, start the car. You just made that broad today. Oh, no! <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. I hate you, Sierra. I hate you. Okay, after about a hundred times, I've actually managed to park the car. These damn motorcycles, unreal. Just making triple sure I've saved it. I got a call from Carol of Carol's Caffeine Castle. She's having some trouble, and I suspect it has something to do with that assortment of motorcycles out in front of her shop. You know, there's no surer way to identify a criminal than the fact that he's riding a motorcycle. And if that motorcycle is part of a gang of motorcycles in bright primary colors, then you've got a real problem. Those drunken bikers in the bar next door. My God, they're parking space hogging. You know, because a motorcycle takes up a lot of space in a parking lot. There's just not enough room for the SUVs anymore. Man, I'm going to go over here and teach these punks what you get for messing with the balls in blue. I think that came out wrong. What you get for messing with the boys in blue. Okay. What we got here? Got... Who is that? Rob Zombie, Kenny Rogers, I can't tell. All I know is he's in really tight pants and he's got an attitude problem. What the beep do you want, pig? Oh, wait, that was... Uh -uh, uh -oh, oh, 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 no, 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 no. You're talking to Sonny Bonds. Oh, come on, Sonny. Come on, Sonny. Talk to this guy. Talk to the woman. Oh, hello. Lose something, son? I was trying to a while ago before I wrecked my car. Well, let's see. ask them to move their bikes. What's of them? Damn it, I don't know what to do. I'm frustrated. I'm embarrassed. I'm humiliated. This guy's a little bit too realistic. Ask for gritty realism, not real realism. You know, maybe I should call that a helpline. You know, I think I'm just going to kind of walk over here, you know, and kind of... Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Sonny. That's what I'm talking about. Now, let's go in there and see what these punks think about that. Yeah, guys, I, I think you better move your mopeds because they kind of got knocked over somehow. And you know what else? I'm about to kick your ass. Oh, yeah, right. Bring it on. Draw the gun, Sonny. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to cut this part out. 
I've got a little plan involving you, me, your ass, and this PR24. <laughs> oh, it wants to get acquainted. Yeah, you better get the hell out of here. Hop up on your huffy and pedal your ass right on out of town. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, 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 that's what I'm talking about. Well, folks, I would show you what happens next, but it gets a bit raunchy. So we're going to have to cut it there. And here's a quick look at Sierra's VGA remake of the original Police Quest game. This debuted in 1991. And as you can see, they have completely revamped the interface. We have a mouse-driven thing now. It's, uh, I actually found this quite cumbersome. As you notice, you got this small little window in the center of the screen. Uh, I guess the graphics uh, have improved, but uh, not. I don't know. This, this version really didn't appeal to me as much as the, uh, the old one did. That, that could be the uh, nostalgia factor, perhaps. Uh, I noticed a few improvements in this. I also noticed a few things I liked uh, less, you know, as bad as the driving was in the original game. I think the driving in this is even worse, I'll show you. So instead of uh, manually controlling the car with the arrow keys, now you are indicating with these sort of blinkers, signal lights, uh, where you like to turn next. You have a gas pedal and a brake uh, there, uh, a radio. It just uh, it seemed quite cumbersome and... And still, you have to manually stop for the, the lights. Every now and then, it'll, the thing in the center will pop up, indicating when you need to stop. So, uh, you know, I, I guess this might be a little easier for some people. I actually found it uh, worse, because, mainly because of the bugs. I actually glitched out here a couple times and had to restart. So, overall, I'm just personally not impressed with the remake. If, if you've got to have the graphics, uh, go for it. Otherwise, I'd, I'd suggest sticking to the original. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week with the first part of a brand new interview series with another of the greats from the game Audio World. This time it's Dave Warhol. He did the music for Pool of Radiance. He's a really great, colorful guy. Got lots and lots of fun stories. So I know you're going to want to see that, so stay tuned. As always, I want to thank you if you have donated to the show and supported it. It really means a lot to me, guys, It's keeping these episodes coming. I also want to announce a new way for you to participate. And the idea is if there's a game that you would like me to uh, review in one of these retrospectives, uh, then what I'd like for you to do is record a short video of yourself, uh, introducing your first introduce yourself and where you're from, and then talk for maybe 10 to 20 seconds about the game uh, that you like to uh, see on the show, why you think it's a great game, why you love it so much. And then if I review it, then I'll include your clip as a part of the video. I think that'll be a lot of fun. If you're interested in that, just send me a message and uh, let me know where you've posted the video. And I'll go I'll look at it. Anyway, I think that's going to be lots of fun. So I'm looking forward to uh, what you guys come up with for that. Now what about that Ale of the Week? Well, this time I've got a little number called the... Sasquatch Stout. Uh, this is brewed by the uh, Sand Creek Brewing Company in Black River Falls, Wisconsin. And the motto of the beer is kind of fun. If you've got the beast, we've got the beer. Uh, so let's open up this uh, stout and let's see what she's all about. All right, so I have the Sasquatch Stout here. Ah, smelling it smells really good. Sort of that chocolatey, nutty kind of raisiny uh, ah, really good smell sort of woodsy kind of whimsy <laughs> whimsy and woodsy it's really nice let's give it a, a sip here a sip what am I talking about mmm mm, that's kind of bitter uh, a little sweet what's that taste like a little bit of a yoo-hoo like a flavor to that You know, if you've ever had some, some possum milk and then right after that you have a, an Andes mint, that sort of combination of flavors in your mouth, that's sort of what I'm experiencing here. It's quite, it's quite nice. Hmm. 
and quite good. I don't think you can really argue with this. I guess it's a little bitter, you know, so if you don't like bitterness, you might want to stay away from it. But it's very drinkable, uh, very uh, nicely flavored. I believe the alcohol is something like 7%, so kind of, uh, kind of up there, so you wouldn't want to drink too many of these. Uh, but overall, very nice choice. I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5 on the drinking horn scale. Uh, very nice stuff. All right, so let's uh, finish up with a quotation. Uh, this time the quotation is from J. Edgar Hoover, and it goes something like this. No amount of law enforcement can solve a problem that goes back to the family. See you guys next week. Wesley, what about the RUSs? Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. Oh!